Thank you to the sponsor of this video. Watch until the end for a special offer on protective eyewear for the eclipse. In the middle of the day, the sky starts to darken. It's as if dusk has fallen early. People look and notice something is happening to the sun. A dark shadow moves before it, gradually devouring every last trace of brightness until our familiar light bringer is only a shimmering, ghostly ring around a pitch black orb. A total eclipse is occurring. This will soon be a reality. One is coming to the continent of North America in April 2024. But if like me, you are one of the many billions of people who won't get a chance to see that particular solar eclipse this April, you might be glad to know that America is not the only place they happen. And neither is Earth. Have you ever wondered what a solar eclipse looks like on another planet? Wonder no more. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and today we're exploring solar eclipses, but not just the ones that happen here on this planet. Allow yourself today to feast your eyes on the actual images and even videos NASA has taken of spectacular eclipses from various places around the solar system. Firstly, I'll quickly explain some of the terminology to do with eclipses. A total solar eclipse is when an object moves in front of the sun, completely obscuring it, also known as an occultation of an object. This is the typical kind of eclipse we see on Earth when, at certain points in Earth's orbit, the orbit of the moon aligns with the sun. There is something special about an eclipse here on Earth. And I'm not just saying that out of some Earth-focused pride. By a bizarre but highly fortunate cosmic coincidence, the Moon is the right size and distance from us that its angular diameter is almost identical in size and shape to the angular diameter of the Sun in our sky. This leaves for an impressive spectacle where the corona of the Sun, or in other words, the Sun's upper atmosphere, creates a ghostly aura around the Moon. This corona, normally too dim to see, extends for hundreds of thousands of kilometers into space. Looking closely around the edge of a total solar eclipse, and you will also see the silhouette of the Moon's craters along the outside, plus these reddish wisps coming off from the Sun. These are prominences millions of tons of charged particles suspended in the Sun's atmosphere by powerful magnetic fields. During an eclipse here on Earth, the Moon casts a shadow about 250 kilometers in diameter, which moves across the Earth as the Moon orbits. In the case of the eclipse happening this April, this shadow will arrive at the Mexican west coastline, then will make its way up through the United States until it passes into parts of Canada before moving over the ocean once more. You can see on this map the path the shadow will take. If any of you happen to live in its pathway, or are close enough to make the drive, you may want to try and see this eclipse for yourself. The Sun will only be totally obscured within the diameter of this shadow. Outside of that, the Sun is only partially obscured from the viewer's perspective. This viewer is witnessing an annular, or partial eclipse also known as a transit. The shadow moves across the Earth extremely fast, at roughly one kilometer a second. Witnessed from a high altitude, it is a majestic sight as the shadow shifts across the landscape. Satellites have also witnessed the movement of this shadow. The shadow isn't as sharp as you might expect, and this is due to the angular diameter of the Sun and the Moon and their distance apart. The Sun itself is huge, a whopping 1.4 million kilometers across. The Moon is much smaller, at only 3,400 kilometers across. Now, this image isn't to scale, but it shows visually why the shadow isn't sharp. The umbra is the shadow where the Sun is completely obscured, and the penumbra is the shadow where the Moon only partially obscures it. This part of the shadow is much wider than the 250 kilometer wide umbra shadow. 
So why doesn't the moon create eclipses every month when it orbits in front of the sun? Well, this is because the moon's orbit is not in line with the Earth's orbit around the sun. This means there are only a couple of times per year when the alignment is right. This alignment of three celestial objects is known as a syzygy. A very cool word, but not something you'll need to remember for this video. I just thought you would find that interesting. If you live in the UK like me, sadly you won't get to see much of the eclipse this April unless you live at the furthest west parts of the country, as the sun will be dipping below the horizon just as it begins. Maybe we will get to see some devil's horns though. Still a spectacular sight indeed. But the Earth is not the only place to experience solar eclipses, and we have the images and videos to prove it. Let's explore eclipses of our closest celestial neighbour, the Moon. Because it would make sense that if the Moon can occult the Earth, then surely the Earth can occult the Moon. And the answer is yes. But it's not the shadow that's the really visually appealing part of this, from the Earth anyway. This is because the Earth is four times as big in the Moon's sky as the Moon is on Earth's. So when the Earth fully obscures the Sun, the whole Moon is in the umbra. At first, the shadow of the Earth creates a crescent shape. Explain that, flat earthers. But what is different this way around is that, unlike the Moon, the Earth has an atmosphere. This means that when the Moon is totally eclipsed, the Earth's atmosphere refracts the Sun's light around the planet, gently illuminating the Moon in a reddish hue. This makes for a beautiful but almost spooky view. The colour is caused by Rayleigh scattering, a topic I've discussed in another video. Rayleigh scattering is the same process that makes our sky blue and our sunsets red. This image is beautiful in that you can see the different wavelengths of light being scattered through Earth's atmosphere, from deep red from this side through to blue on this side. From the Moon's perspective, none of the Sun would be visible during a total eclipse, but the atmosphere on Earth would be illuminated, so you would see a ring around it. This is an actual view of a lunar eclipse on the Moon by one of the JAXA probes in 2009. It's quite the awe-inspiring sight. The Earth and Moon aren't just getting in the way of each other either. Here is the Earth eclipsing the Apollo 12 spacecraft in 1969 while it was on its way back home. And here's the Moon getting in the way of the Earth from the perspective of the Discover satellite. Interestingly, this is the side of the Moon you never see, as the Moon is tidally locked to the Earth, which means the same face is always looking towards Earth. From this perspective, the Moon looks very foreign. But it is indeed a real video of our only natural satellite transiting the Earth. From another satellite's perspective, but this time looking at the Sun with the SDO satellite, the Moon often makes an appearance. The position of this satellite as it orbits the Earth means the Moon can block the Sun occasionally. And here's the Moon again, this time from the perspective of one of the stereo satellites. The Moon isn't the only thing that orbits between us and the Sun. Mercury often transits across the Sun, a tiny minnow compared to the solar system's giant. The next time this will happen is on the 13th of November 2032, so a little while away. You might want to put it in your calendars for now. Venus also orbits between us and the Sun, and as it is much closer to us and bigger than Mercury, its silhouette appears much larger. Its last transit was in 2004 and 2012, but sadly if you miss those two, chances are that you will never see it. These transits happen in pairs, and then there is a 100 year gap until the next one. In other words, the next transit will be in 2117. This happens for the same reason the Moon doesn't eclipse us every month. The orbits just don't often align. Still, we have high definition videos of the last one, and it is quite the sight to behold. Moving to another planet now, we can go to Mars, which has plenty of unmanned robotics either in orbit or on the surface. 
Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. They are both pretty small. Phobos is 22 kilometers across and Deimos is only 13 kilometers across. They both orbit very close to the planet though. Phobos is only 9,000 kilometers above the surface and Deimos is 23,000 kilometers, which means although tiny, you can still easily see them from the surface of Mars, especially Phobos. The Curiosity rover was able to capture a moment where, incredibly, Phobos eclipsed Deimos. This video is captured in real time and shows the size differences of the moons in the Martian sky. And this is not all the Curiosity rover captured. It was also able to see a transit of Phobos in front of the Sun. Due to the distance of Phobos to Mars, it moves across the sky fairly quickly, only taking about 7 hours to orbit once. This means that this video you are watching is in real time, and these solar eclipses on Mars don't last for more than about 30 seconds. The surrounding ground does get noticeably darker during an eclipse by Phobos, as can be seen from the rover's perspective, but it can also be seen from space. Phobos's shadow here can be seen by the Viking 1 orbiter, and also here more recently by the Mars Global Surveyor. The Opportunity and Spirit rovers have also seen a transit of Deimos, but it appears much smaller, just a dot passing in front of the Sun. It doesn't cause a noticeable decrease in brightness. Mars is pretty impressive, but that's not all the solar system has to offer. Have a look at this video, captured by the Hubble Space Telescope, looking at Jupiter. Jupiter has four large moons, three of which at certain points can transit the planet at the same time, leaving three big shadows. The moons in question in this video are Io, Callisto and Europa. Interestingly, like we talked about before with the Umbra and Penumbra, you can see that because Io is the closest to the planet, its shadow is the sharpest. Whereas you can see with Callisto, the furthest away of these three moons, the Penumbra is much larger, causing a blurry shadow. And in this video, Hubble spies the occultation of Ganymede, the largest moon of Jupiter. Cassini saw some incredible transits and occultations of Saturn's many moons. Here is one of Epimetheus passing in front of Titan, with Dione coming in from the side. This little white dot coming in from the left just under the ring is in fact a bright background star. And this Hubble view is magnificent. Here are Enceladus, Mimas, Dione and Tethys orbiting Saturn. Once every 15 years, Saturn's rings and moons are aligned just right so that the moon's shadows stream across the rings as well as on the planet. This video is a time lapse that lasted 9.5 hours. Amazing. Going a bit further out, we come to Neptune and its biggest moon Triton. Sadly we don't have a video, but this image captured by Voyager 2 is gorgeous. Three days after passing by Neptune, Voyager was able to capture the presence of Neptune and Triton before Neptune slipped in front of Voyager's view of Triton. Going further out again, we come to the furthest celestial object explored in the solar system, Pluto. As New Horizons whizzed by Pluto in 2015, it turned its camera back towards Pluto to capture the dwarf planet totally eclipsing the Sun. What it saw was dazzling the sunlight streaming through and illuminating the atmosphere and its haze layers, with the ridges and mountains on Pluto's surface highlighted by the stark contrast of Pluto's night side. Occultations and transits may be breathtakingly beautiful, but are they actually useful to us scientifically? Well, did you know? that Uranus was discovered to have rings because of an occultation of a background star. As the planet passed in front of the star from our perspective, the star dimmed before and after the planet obscured it. With this information, we are able to count how many rings Uranus has. On top of that, the transits of exoplanets in front of their stars are actually how we can detect exoplanets. Telescopes like Kepler and TESS 
measure the brightness of stars in the sky. If a star dims, it could be because one of its planets just passed in front of it. If the star continually dims in a pattern, for instance once every 100 days, then we know that a planet orbits that star and takes 100 days to do so. Using this method, space agencies like NASA have discovered over 3,000 exoplanets, more than all other methods of exoplanet detection combined. It can even help scientists calculate the size of the planet by measuring how much the star dimmed or the composition of that planet's atmosphere by looking at the spectra of the light that passes through from the star to us. It might be some time before we see a solar eclipse again. After the one in April, the next eclipse won't happen in America until 2044. Here in the UK, the next one won't occur until 2090. If I live to see it, I will be a very old man. But I'm amazed as I see all of the images of eclipses that take place throughout the solar system. There's a special beauty to each one of them, a fleeting moment where one celestial body brushes lightly against another, even if it's only through their shadows. Rather than harbingers of doom, these moments fill me with awe and remind me how connected the universe is. Even across thousands, millions, or even billions of kilometers of space, we can notice a planet's passing. And if you're in the right place at the right time, oh, what wonders you can see. Thanks for watching, and as a reminder, if you do want to see a solar eclipse, or even a partial solar eclipse, you should never look at the sun directly, even through a camera lens. Fortunately, the sponsor of today's video has you covered. Even when eclipsed by the moon, the sun emits enough infrared, ultraviolet, and intense visible light to seriously damage your eyes. Fortunately, the sponsor of today's video, VisiSolar, has that side of things covered. VisiSolar lenses are made using 2 mil scratch-resistant silver polymer lens material with an optical density of 5 or greater. This allows them to block out 100% of infrared and ultraviolet light and 99.999% of intense visible light, which is really quite impressive. I find it fascinating that you need that much protection. It really highlights how powerful the sun is, even when eclipsed. It's really not something you want to mess around with, so it's a good thing VisiSolar is recognized as ISO compliant by the American Astronomical Society. If you or your family are thinking about watching the eclipse, why not order a single or combo pack of VisiSolar glasses or the smartphone photo solar lens that lets you take photos of the eclipse to keep for your memories. If you click on my link in the description below or use my QR code, you'll get a 20% discount coupon on your next purchase. Go check it out. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you may like my others in this playlist. A big thanks to my patrons and members. If you want to support and have your name added to the end of every Astrum video, check the links below. All the best and see you next time.